Hello guys and today I'm back. I hope you watched the other video where I showed you the most basic or the most normal way of connecting your amplifier. I'm also using the jack that 245 cardio amplifier and last time I showed you how to use three speakers. The other speaker was similar to this one but today you can see I have added another one. So it's not always that you'll just use three speakers, two mid-range speakers and the subwoofer speaker. You can also add your mid-range speakers. So today I'm going to show you how to calculate how many speakers you are going to add. This is a Sony 13 centimeter speaker and this is a Pioneer 6x9 inch speaker. And both speakers are connected to this port over here. Both of them are connected to channel 1 of my speaker. So why did I connect them to this speaker? That's what we are going to find out today. But before that, let me show you the insides of the two speakers. So the first thing we are going to check is how these two speakers look inside. This is the Sony speaker and this is the Pioneer speaker. The Pioneer speaker is a 6x9 inch Coaxio speaker. And the most important thing we're going to check is the impedance. This speaker has 4 ohms impedance. As for the Sony one, the Sony one has an impedance of also 4 ohms over here. This is rated at 40 watts. Not the peak power but the rated power. This is 40 watts while this one is 60 watts. As long as I don't put a lot of music through these speakers, they're going to work fine. I, I just use these speakers for the mid-range side. I like the Pioneer speaker because I put this port here. It's great for mid-bass and this excel at the higher frequency ranges. So the Twitter in this one is so great. The mid-range bass is great for these speakers. So in total I use a total of 5 speakers. 4 mid-range speakers and 1 subwoofer speaker. So I'm going to show you why I connect two speakers to one channel. Right now I've disconnected the other ones because it's the one I am using as the demo here. So this is how you calculate the impedance to connect your amplifier. Two speakers to one port. So over here you can check this amplifier has a 2 ohms table. Which means that it can handle 2 ohms at the output over here. Normally each speaker is 4 ohms, maybe you can connect 4 ohms over here and 4 ohms over here. But you can already see that this is 2 ohms table. So I'm going to show you how I calculated the... How I calculated how to connect these two speakers. So as always, never forget to connect all your ports over here with the signal. And so let's go back to what we are talking about. We are talking about getting the 2 ohms table. So one speaker has 4 ohms and the other speaker 2 has 4 ohms. In general, we want to combine this to become 2 ohms. They come to 2 ohms, but how do they come to that? So we are going to calculate. The calculation we do is a product of a sum. Product of a sum. So the product of 4 and 4 divided by the sum of 4 plus 4. 4 plus 4. So you can get to 16 divided by 8. This comes to 2 ohms. So that's how we get the 2 ohms. So our amplifier can handle 2 ohms. This is 2 ohms table. So I can use 2 ohms. So when I'm using 2 ohms, I get much better power output. So so why do, you, do we use 2 speakers? And why do we take advantage of the 2 ohms table? Well. Well, the impedance is what you can refer to as resistance. Resistance to mu music as far as the speakers go. So if you have 4 ohms, this is higher resistance than 2 ohms. 2 ohms, this is a lo lower resistance. So you have much better music with 2 ohms than at 4 ohms will get much higher output at 2 ohms than at 4 ohms. So that's the advantage you take off. So the main drawback of using this method is that you use a lot of power. So you must make sure that your power supply can handle all those speakers. Otherwise it's going to 
the amplifier is going to switch off on its own. So let me explain about the power thing. You see this green light over here? This green light means that the amplifier is working okay. But if it becomes red, it means that you are overloading it. And the power supply you've connected to it cannot provide the enough power to power th this amplifier. So sometimes this is changed to red and your power supply over here will switch off automatically. When you put music at high volumes or when you demand a lot of power from your system, it's going to automatically sh switch off. So that's why you use fuses in your equipment. It's very important to use fuses. For me, I'm depending on the fuse from the plug, but I know this power supply, it has internal protection. As long as the current will be drawn too much, it actually automatically switches off on its own. So when it does that, I just come and switch it off over here, let it rest for a few minutes, then I switch on, essentially to reset it, then I reduce the volume of my music from the input source.